Hello, I'm David, and I live in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And um, it's a Saturday today. I'm back in the apple orchard because it's so brutally roasting. Well, it is for me as an Englishman. It's about 38 degrees at the moment, so I've had to find somewhere to get some shade. And to be honest with you, there isn't much apart from, as I say, here in the apple orchard, most probably at the top of the uh, garden. God, I got scratched. Nevertheless, I'll be typically British and brave. Um, yeah, so I wanted to talk today about healthcare in Bosnia and Herzegovina, my views on healthcare and something that you might not know about it. And by the way, there's a road going through the village. It's behind the camera. So hopefully we don't get too much noise. A lot of people in Bosnia and Herzegovina say that the healthcare is not all that good and it's much better in Northern or in Western Europe. And for some years, I would have really, really agreed with them. Um, back, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago now, Tamara had a mild stroke, uh, which is quite devastating because she's quite young, but um, she got through it. But she had to go to Belgrade to get sorted out. They took her by ambulance, actually, from Banja Luka, which is the biggest city near where I live. And I remember going into that hospital and it was like dire. I thought I'd come into something from the third world. It was just like miserable, horrible, holes in the roof and everything. And prior to that, I'd even been to visit some friends um, and the lady was pregnant. So we went into the maternity ward and that was just like awful. And then uh, I went to Belgrade to be with Tamara. I stayed there for about four weeks, five weeks, something like that, because she was in a pretty bad way at the time. And although the doctors were pretty swish, once again, the infrastructure was like crap. There's no other way to put it. It was awful. And yet people said, you know, you need to go to Belgrade because it's better than Banja Luka. And I would have agreed with them. Lack of medications. You had to bring your own sort of like prescription tablets. That was back in the day. We're talking 15 years ago or so. And those sort of like stories still hang on. But, and this is a big but, I disagree with them. Now, I'm not treated here better than anybody else. I'm not. There might not be too many Brits here. Funny old thing, uh, another funny old thing, is I found out today that there's um, an English lady from London married to a local guy. They live over in the... Uh, in the River Una area, and I'm hopefully going to catch up with her to chat to her. But anyway, what I wanted to say was, um, yeah, I don't get treated any differently. Now, let's pause things talking about the actual medical help just for a second. Um, when I got married, um, before I got married and I was here, I had to have private health insurance. But then when I got married, I was entitled to state help, at least in this part of the country, in the northern part of the country. I was in, entitled to state help. Um, and all I had to do was pay 10% of my UK pension, my state pension, into the state fund here. Seems reasonable, to, reasonable for me. I mean, people have been living here all their life, right? Paying in every month when they can and whatnot. And I just can't turn up and just say, hey, I'm here now. Can I have the full the full Monty, the full nine yards. So I didn't find that such a, a burden, really. And I've now got a health book. I had a health book, and now I've got a health card. Everything's been digitized. Um, some time ago, I broke my left ankle, and it was pretty serious. Um, I was semi-conscious in the garden. <laughs> because it had snapped and then I tried to stand up on it and it was just like miserable, right? I'm sure you've known people that's been like that, maybe yourself. But at the end of the day, the family said, uh, and they called the ambulance. Now the ambulance is six kilometers away. An ambulance was here within 15 minutes. I was impressed. And they looked after me and they took me to the local, what they call uh, health center. 
It's a completely different system here to what I was used to in the UK because in the UK you, go, you have a family doctor, here we go to a health centre. And ours is in Banja Luka because that's where Tamara um, comes from originally. But anyway, I got taken to the local health centre uh, and they said, yeah, we think it's broken. They strapped it up um, and said, you know, you can use a wheelchair, you can get to your own car and when you get to the other end there'll be, there'll be another wheelchair waiting. So we drove into Banja Luka, which is about 25 clicks away, 25 kilometres away. And I went there and uh, I was processed very quickly at what, would, what in the UK would be classed as ER. ER. Um, and yeah, and I waited there for about an hour and then they took me away to get some x-rays. That wasn't a problem. And then they came along and said, yeah, and you need an operation. We need to pin this. So my question was, um, how long before I get the, the appointment to do that? And they said, we're going to do it now. I went, what? The only problem being was that Tamara and I had been sat in reception and I had a, a small bottle of water and some, some chocolate. We'll wait for the tractor to go past, which has got a pig in the back. No, two big pigs in the back. Back to the story. So I said, well, I've eaten something and drunk something. And they said, all right. And they just took me in and prepped me for um, theatre. And I was out of there by about one o'clock in the morning and I spent a day and a half on the ward. And the hospital is very, very modern, exceedingly modern. Um, it was just like anywhere else in the Western world. So I was really impressed with that, um, with the treatment I got. Uh, I had a local anaesthetic. Um, it was a, a like a state-of-the-art operating theatre. And, yeah, I stayed for a day and a half on the ward to make things, make sure things were all right. And then I, I got picked up by the family and brought home. And my post-care treatment was first class, honestly. No complaints at all. It was that actually that uh, got me to get state health care because uh, I didn't have it at the time and it was being billed as private. Uh, and we got uh, the bill. Uh, I can't remember exactly how much it was, but it wasn't really devastatingly expensive by any shakes. But now, as I say, I pay my 10% of my UK state uh, pension into their pension fund, their health fund, and I get covered. Now, I think that applies to everybody. The hospital is a little bit overworked. Early in the mornings, there are lots and lots of people here, basically because that's, it is the regional hospital. And it's got everything in it, right? Now, I've, at the start of this year, had some problems in the waterworks department. Uh, and it looked like I had a UTI, a urinary tract infection. Sorry for TMI, but I want to tell you um, about my personal experience uh, accessing healthcare. Now it's a shaggy dog story. In other words, it could take forever and ever and ever to go on. It's still not finished. But I've had all manner of tests, uh, and they have been free, because I get healthcare, uh, and because of my age, as you know, I'm 71, so I don't even pay. I don't even pay prescription charges here. And I've had, uh, as I say, all manner of tests. I've had a CT scan, uh, which they couldn't get the detail that they needed to see what the problem was. And then finally, I had an MRI scan. The MRI scan was conducted in a private clinic. Well, not, yeah. And the specialist that I saw was in a private clinic because the state healthcare system said, well, you might have to wait a bit. And I didn't want to wait, wait, wait a bit. I'm 71 and if, if I've got some problems, I want to get them sorted so that I'm around for as long as possible. I'm not worried about dying, but, you know, it's a little bit too early to just duck out of the scene, so to speak. 
so yeah i've had exposure as well to the private sector here which is top notch and nowhere near as expensive as in the eu and definitely nowhere as expensive as united kingdom and people in the united states would just laugh i'm not going to tell you how much i've paid yet but maybe we'll do another video about that if you have any questions right so i'm here talking to you about state health care in bosnia and herzegovina and i have not finished my latest round of treatment we're off to go on a holiday our annual holiday we're going to the island of rab by the way on the croatian coast up north uh, in the istria and when we come back then i'll have my everything i need because i need to have a biopsy and then they're going to work out what they're going to do worst case scenario they're going to have to take a kidney out but you know i'm hoping that is not going to be the case so keep your fingers crossed for me now if you come to bosnia and herzegovina and you have health insurance which I highly recommend that you do if you're going to come and visit, it means if anything goes wrong, they're going to pay for it. And you should not be worried about the standard of, of not coming to this country because, ah, oh, the standard's going to be rubbish and my life will be threatened. You couldn't be further from the truth on that. Couldn't be further from the truth. If you want to come and live here, uh, and there was a video that I released earlier in the series here about retiring to Bosnia, and I've got to do some backups with that, um, you can obviously stay here and live here uh, if you're married to a local. So that's how I've done it um, with my residency. You can buy property here uh, as long as your country uh, has a reciprocal agreement with Bosnia-Herzegovina. And I think you can then get permanent residence that way, or you can start a business here and employ a few people and you get a route in that way. Other routes, I'm not sure. But that would be up to you to find out. But what I wanted to say with this video was healthcare is good. Maybe it wasn't. And I told you 15, 20 years ago, I thought it was dire. I've changed my opinion because the world has moved on. You know, our, our hospital, the University Clinic of Banja Luka is a brand new um, facility. And I really, from my experience, I have nothing wrong to say about the medical care that I've had. So that's about it for this. Um, another chat um, for a guy who's over 70 and living in uh, Bosnia. By the way, if you saw, I think it was my video on how I make my vlogs, I did say that I was using AI to make the thumbnails. I've decided not to do that, as you can see. So if you've been watching and you want to say, David, you, you said you were going to use AI and you haven't, things change. It's the way it is. So yeah, please like the video. Um, subscribe would help. Um, I'm trying to rebuild my uh, YouTube presence. It's going to take some time, I know. I'd like to monetize it if I could, because it will give me a little extra cash as a pensioner to have a few of the nice things that I don't have to save up for. So if you could do that, it'd be great. If you'd like to give me comments, I will always uh, reply to them. And if you would like uh, a free subscription to my blog, anenglishmanintheBalkans.com, then put it down in uh, the comments and I'll get back to you. So you'd have to look out for that because I do need your email address to put you on the list. So from today, from the uh, apple orchard, and Tamara's father's just gone past recently with uh, a whole wheelbarrow full of apples, and there's more and more to go now as they start to get put in for rotting. And at the end of uh, October, early November, we'll be making um, either apple or plum brandy, and I'll bring you along with me. So there you go. Stay safe wherever you are in the world. Fidi Musa Opet. I will see you again.